All right, let's talk close combat and fistful of lead. For this example, we're going to use uh, not use any of the traits for the characters. We're not using any armor, uh, any close combat weapons. Just very basic uh, test to show you how it goes. So, let's say our retrovarian here is already activated, and one of our uh, faceless minions here activates. He moves in and attacks. Now. You can use both actions to get there. You can use one action to get there. It doesn't matter. The close combat still happens. It happens anytime you're activating within one inch of an opponent. And in this case, uh, we, we always measure, try to measure head to head rather than base to base. What that ends up happening is you tend to have uh, miniatures being base to base just because uh, most miniatures are based on an, either an inch or close to an inch. It's okay to fudge it. So once they contact each other, you're going to roll for each one of them. Let's say the Retrovarian got a 6, and our Faceless Minion got a 7. So the Faceless Minion gets a plus 1 because he charged in. So this becomes an 8. So he has won the combat. You look at the differential between the two. In this case, it's a, uh, a two. So he's going to roll to see what happens on the close combat wounds. And he's rolling on the wound chart, and he's adding zero to this roll. The differential of one to two means there's nothing that's added. So a six, in this case, would be a wound. He would be knocked down and get a wound marker. Okay. Let's say he didn't cause one. Let's just say he only caused a shock. The uh, faceless minion has the option of either pushing the retrovarian back, switching places with him, or just keeping him where he is. Now, why would I just keep him where he is versus push him away? Well, it becomes important based on terrain. You might push him off of a cliff. Uh, you might push him... Uh, away hoping that you'll then be able to leave combat later because once he's away then now they're not locked in combat so when he activated he could run off. Now why would he keep him in place? Well let's say one of his buddies is close enough that when he activates he comes in here now they both get to gang up on him. So in this case everyone rolls even this guy who's already gone. That's the only time you're allowed to uh, close combat more than once in a turn. Same way with this guy. So he's still going to roll his die. These two guys, we're going to put blue down here, red down here, still get to roll their dice. He is going to be at a minus one for the shock. Remember, any marker that's on a character is a minus one. And then he's going to have a minus one for being outnumbered. So... Roll them all together. He looked out, got a 10. 10. But that 10, remember the minus 2, goes down to an 8. So in this case, our blue die beats him, but Retrovarian beats our red die. So I'll roll for the blue guy first. Again, with the differential of 2, he's not going to add anything to his result. In this case, he got a 9. So Retrovarian has been put out of action but not before he gets to see what happens uh, with the dice here. With a differential of five, he'll get to roll and add plus two before he goes down. We'll say that was a seven. So seven plus two becomes a nine. So our Retrovarian managed to take out his enemy before he went down. So this is why it becomes important. Say that same thing was getting ready to happen, the Retrovarian had one, he could have shoved him away so when this guy comes in, it becomes just a single battle rather than a one-on-one. -on -one. Let's say these two, for whatever reason, our Retrovarian uh, decided not to shove either one of these away. Maybe he uh, lost a combat earlier and he came in, managed to not throw, do anything to these guys, which would, you would have something to do. 
with him in the close combat. But let's just say, for whatever reason, well, let's think this through. So, he is already there. He runs up and attacks him. He decides to keep him in combat. Most The least that's going to happen is that he gets a shock. Okay, he runs up. They fight again. He manages not to win either combat. He's going to at least get another shock from each one of them. So, he's already sitting on that. All right, for one of his buddies decides to come in and fight. So what I would do in a, uh, let's say a convention center, convention setting when there's a lot going on, I would probably split two fights into each one. Uh, two fights, one fight here, one fight here, and they both would fight them simultaneously. Now, you can go and roll these all together and then try to figure out who beat who in the combat. I think it can be done, but it's a little bit complicated uh, to walk through and kind of slows the game down. So I advocate for splitting the combat up. Now, there's also other situations. So that, say we got a situation where we got two guys here. This guy hits, he's technically more than one inch away from this guy. So only these two would fight. Now this can set up some sort of gamey situations where you're trying to run in from different angles, trying to not have to fight both of them. But you could also have a situation where this guy has a spear, he would get to fight because the spears and other long weapons have a two inch combat range. So you can actually set up your forces to take into consideration, say this is a sword guy, and this is a spear guy, so when he attacks, uh, they both get to fight. Let's say he attacks here, he doesn't get to fight. Later on, and uh, this guy wins and decides to hold him in the close combat. This guy comes running in here. This is a case where I would only have these two fighting, and these two would be a separate fight because he's too far away from him. Okay, another situation. Let's have our faceless minion attack the retrovarians here. If this guy was up, they would all fight, but because he is down, he loses his zone of control of one inch. So this fight is only going to be between these two. This guy won't count as outnumbered. However, if our faceless minion had decided to attack the wounded guy, well, then they would all fight because he is the subject of the attack. He gets to have his buddy help him. And in that case, we would roll for all of them. All right, so let's go ahead and do this big brawl, even though this is probably not how I would do it uh, in a standard fight, but this is just to show you. So the black and white are gonna be my retrovarians. The red and blue are gonna be my faceless minions. So they both get threes. Blue up top here, nine and a 10. So this is pretty fairly easy to ad, ad, uh, adjudicate, uh, but you need to assign who is basically the primary here. It's not gonna matter because these two guys are got beat by him. So he gets to roll for both of them. So both of those are beat by a seven, so he gets to add three on each. That would come out to an eight which would uh, give this guy a wound. And he also beat this guy. Again, adding three, seven, gives this guy a wound too. This guy beat him by nine. We're keeping the little numbers here just so we can keep track of them. Uh, beat him by six which is a plus two to his roll, we'll roll against this guy. Now, normally we would count uh, the existing wound, but because this is all simultaneous, he is not gonna get to add the wound to his roll. So seven becomes a nine, which would put him out of action. He also beat this guy. A one plus two becomes a three, so this guy would have a shock on him. 
So it can be done. It can be done quickly. Uh, just remember if you uh, beat a miniature. So in this case, let's say this guy had won a combat against these two. He gets to roll for both of them. So he beat them both. So he actually gets to have, he did a big dramatic swing and actually gets to roll for wound on both of these guys. So hopefully that helps you uh, with figuring out your close combat. Again, we did this without any kind of bonuses. We did this without any kind of special weapons or anything like that, which can add a little bit uh, more to your choices about why you would want to keep somebody in close combat versus shove them away. But uh, my personal advice is whenever you think you're going to get attacked, you get rid of that guy. So when this guy comes in, uh, it's an even fight. So there you go. Hopefully that helps.